Thank you for the invitation and the possibility to give a presentation at this important meeting. First of all, I want to transmit congratulations in the name of Encore for this great anniversary of ECHO. And I sincerely hope that also in the future, our organizations will cooperate so well as they have done until now. I will speak after an introduction on the EQF, the Bologna system, about curricula, in particular about practice, and then about the document on practice in conservation, restoration, education, which we did two years ago, about future aims and strategies of Encore and come to a conclusion. According to the statutes, the aim of Encore is to further research and education. The recent decades have indeed shown a steadily growing trend towards research in conservation restoration. According to the eco-professional guidelines, the conservatory restorer contributes to the perception and understanding of the cultural heritage. In particular, not only the end product of a treatment, but much more the insight into the processes is interesting for the public. By research, information becomes denser and cultural heritage will take on added value for the public and further the appreciation of our own history and roots. At the 20th anniversary of ECHO in Barcelona in 2011, I gave a presentation which highlighted the establishment of Encore in 1997 and its development since. In comparison to that, five years are only a small lapse. Nevertheless, Encore has made important progress. After more than three years of preparation from the first idea and efforts to find a definition for the term practice in education, including numerous in-depth discussions, the document of practice was ratified at the 10th General Assembly of Encore in Liège in 2014. But before explaining the document, let us first go back, let, let us first go into the background. The background lies in the ultimate goal of Encore, which is to establish an agreed standard level of education for the profession of the conservative restorer in Europe. As most prof professions are defined in the first place by their education, it is also necessary for the profession of the conservative restorer to define the level of and the pathways in education. The definition of the conservative restorer was a topic of heated discussions over many years based on the central question, who should have access to the profession? As reported five years ago, there was a heavy collision of two concepts. The concept of defining the necessary competencies of the conservative restorer and the concept of a university-based education and training. I come to the EQF. In 2006, the European recommendation for the European Qualification Framework for Lifelong Learning came into effect. Setting up a system of eight levels of qualification and including the generic descriptions of the respective levels of knowledge, skills, competencies. This is well known, I think. Shortly after launching the EQF, the European project ECPL started. And ECPL stood for European Conservation Practitioners License. The project was conducted by Heritage Malta with partners from France, Italy, and Greece. In a second step, ECHO and Encore were invited both to participate as advisors. In the third meeting of the project, in December 2006, following the initiative of the representatives of the two organizations, a most important step was reached. 
Although the project had been aimed at the levels two to five, the project partners agreed that the level of a fully professional conservatory store should be at level seven, which by the definitions of EQF corresponds to a master's degree. In the following months, this decision was accepted by all relevant players in Europe, in particular also by the ones more or less being opposed to the university path. Thus, at least partially, a conflict of many years was resolved. Since then, we have managed to do a big, step, a big leap forward. Within the ECPL project, first steps towards the description of the competencies and also curricula related to eight different specializations were made. Although the project had been initially focused to level two to five, the work was now dedicated to level seven. And in the course of the discussions, it very soon turned out that there was no easy way of describing competences as well as curricula without seriously limiting the idea of a discipline being in constant development. Even if the, in the end the ECPL project did not deliver satisfactory results in respect to its envisaged aim, by this finding and by fixing level seven, the project had contributed considerably to the development. After the ECPL project had ended in 2008, ECHO had stopped already its work on a definition of the professional profile of the conservatory restorer. Initially, initially, the competence group faced similar problems as the ECPL project, but they switched then towards another concept. Instead of describing competences by a detailed list of a descriptive scheme was developed, which links the numerous steps and issues of the conservation restoration process to distinct types of knowledge and skills, thus avoiding a narrow-minded, exhaustive system with, which necessarily would have been restrictive in respect to any further professional development. And in 2010, as we have heard already, the General Assembly of ECHO ratified the document Competences for Access to the Conservation Restoration Profession. As mentioned, EQF Level 7 formally corresponds to a master's degree, which since the beginning has also been the standard for full membership in Encore. In addition to Level 7, the document description of the competences for Level 6 corresponding to a bachelor's degree and level eight, corresponding to a PhD, can also be found. And in this context, I would like to add that a definition for the bachelor level is still problematic, as the bachelor is not a fixed entity within the Bologna system. It may cover a range from 180 up to 240 ECTS. And for the PhD, I have to add that the doctorate is, by definition, the formal qualification to conduct independent research. Therefore, the shown competences for level eight, PhD, may only serve as one example. Nevertheless, in defining the competences for access to the conservation restoration profession, ECHO has achieved a real milestone and ended a discussion which had taken many years. Even if some details may vary in the future, this concept will form the basis for all further developments. I come now to the Bologna system, which is one of the core issues of Encore. The Bologna process was started in 98 with the Sorbonne Declaration of the four education ministers of France, Germany, Italy, and the UK. It was aimed at harmonization of the architecture of the European higher education system. In particular, it aimed at enhancing mobility, cooperation, and diversity of study opportunities. And this should be reached by the introduction of the three-level study architecture, bachelor, master, PhD. And it also introduced the European credit transfer system, the ECTS. 
The idea of the ECTS was that students should be able to gather credit points also in other universities in order to follow their study curriculum, but yet giving it a specific personal direction, taking advantage of the diversity of the European universities. Another important novelty was that, was that for lectures, not the listing of the contents should be relevant anymore, but the outcomes of the lectures in terms of competences. These outcomes would have to be described for each lecture. Meanwhile, 18 years later, the Bologna system has been established for the large majority of the existing studies in the European countries. Also in the field of conservation and restoration, most of the European schools follow now the threefold study structure. Although initially there had been sharp protests from many sides. For example, the participants of the annual meeting of the German speaking schools, some of you may remember, in Vienna in 2001, signed a paper of harsh protest to be distributed to the relevant authorities. But nevertheless, in the end, nearly all European schools had to switch to the bachelor master system, often leaving behind well-established study structures which had been backed by the national associations. And there are only few exemptions who could stick to the existing structure. But inter interestingly enough, in Italy, also some new five-year master courses without intermediate bachelor degree have been introduced recently. I come now to, to the point curricular practice. It has taken a number of years to change not only the course structures, but also the structures and description of the lectures, taking into account the new way of describing lectures, which involves much more efforts than previously. Until now, as far as I see, the process does not seem to be finished at all. According to the competences defined for ECHO for level seven, the universities will have in consequence to adapt the curricula and to define the competences. Unfortunately, this is a very complicated task in a discipline where tacit knowledge as well as ethical commitment have to be transmitted. The only existing overarching approach in the sense of a list of subjects to start with can be found in the ECHO professional guidelines, a list which derived from the list of subjects given in the documentation of the European project COMBIFORE, some of you may remember. Conservation restoration is not an entirely th theoretical subject and the major issue in education is the close link to practical activities, to what we call practice. In 97, the document of Pavia stressed in paragraph six, the need for an appropriate balance of integrated theoretical and practical teaching. Already in 84, the ICOMCC document, the conservatory store, a definition of the profession, states that at all stages, major emphasis should be placed on practice but more or less without further details. In 94, the part three of the ECHO professional guidelines, which deals with the education part, there the term practice is specified in another paragraph, coming already much closer to the subject when speaking quite detailed about case studies. When comparing the various European schools, it becomes obvious that there are considerable differences in the practical part of the teaching. Nevertheless, the term practice is being used universally, albeit sometimes with very different notions. In order to come to a harmonized system where teaching offered by the schools is comparable, thus facilitating international exchange, it was therefore necessary to examine the different meanings and notions of the term practice. 
So Encore began, began drafting a document that should describe practice in education in its full complexity, so that in the future, the community will be able to use a common language and common terms. The first discussion took place in the beginning of May 2011 within the board and continued then during the months to follow. But it was not before the 9th General Assembly in Valencia in April 2012 that the paper was introduced to the Encore members to enlarge the discussion forum. Many additional issues were raised and afterwards included in the text. Two years later, at the 10th General Assembly in Liège in March 2014, an amended version was submitted and after some smaller changes, finally ratified with the, ti with the title on practice in conservation restoration education. I will give now a brief overview on the document on practice uh, yesterday I realized that only few people know the document actually, even if we have it had on our website for, for months. I will now go into some details. After an introduction of the document, the, the document sets out with a list of learning outcomes, which mirror the activities of a conservatory store as specified in the professional guidelines. You see that here. Practice in the sense of an only mechanical activity is very rare, we found out. In education, practice is nearly always connected with theoretical teaching or considerations. A number of altogether nine different categories of practice required in education were identified, each of them containing also a distinct proportion of theory. You have to go into detail when you, when you want to know more about this. I don't, I don't go into depth here, but I will rather go to the last part, the didactic requirements, which I consider extremely important in terms of a tool for, 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 for teaching people who have to deal with their administration and fight for resources. I cite, the education process must prepare the student for the responsibilities that the future conservative restorer will take on. It is therefore necessary that the student is entrusted with conservation restoration projects during his or her studies under the guidance of a teacher. The project and the tasks involved can be of a relatively simple nature in the beginning, but while advancing, the student will have to master increasingly complex tasks. It's work on originals. Teachers tutoring practice projects should normally be fully professional conservative restorers themselves with ample experience in the relevant field. A full conservation restoration curriculum should enable the student to work through projects from the very beginning to the end. In addition, towards the final stage of the curriculum, the independence of the students in executing these projects should increase while the intensity of direct supervision decreases in order for the students to become more autonomous and responsible professionals. Student practice projects have to be independent of the pressures of time and money. This is very important because independence from time and money constraints gives the students the opportunity to develop a deeper understanding of the conservation restoration process with all its implications, including the decision-making process. These conditions in combination with the necessary infrastructure and professional teaching will normally be found only in the context of a university or institution of recognized equivalence. 
in order to prepare the student for the profession project with tight deadlines must also be experienced. This may be realized better in a placement such as an internship outside the university or educational institution. Finally, one of the most important prerequisites is the teacher-student ratio. Practice which does not involve original material with not, will not need very close supervision and can normally be, normally be taught in larger groups. Student conservation projects, on the other hand, need a low teacher-student ratio, normally one to six, one to eight. In the case of a complex project, this ratio may even come down to one to one, as is usual for final master projects. The quality of an educational program depends directly on the teaching capacity, which is allocated to the practice component of the program. So you see, this document contains a number of very crucial statements, and it is hoped that this document will serve well as a tool or even weapon in discussions with the finance administration of the member institutions. I come now to future aims and strategies of Encore. No. <laughs> Not yet. Encore attempts to develop a harmonized educational system. We often meet hardly comparable systems side by side with study structures of five years split into bachelor and master studies or five coherent years or a standalone four years bachelor or a standalone two years master program. In particular, the amount and character of practice found in the various curricula sometimes differs enormously. In terms of preparedness of the graduates for the market, they should arrive at the level common to all. And if we say that level seven, the master's level, should give access to the profession, then the curricula have to be adapted accordingly not only in regard to theory, but also in what concerns practice. The curricula have to be related to the eco competencies and the idea we have is to describe a grid for curricula which includes an adequate amount of practice according to our document as well as the theoretical subjects. Then it should be possible to reach a harmonization which also includes teaching institutions not offering the complete program because the missing parts could be acquired in other institutions. Also, the question of specialization should be considered. This would also go very well together with the concept of lifelong learning, which is, as you know, the basis for EQF. It is important, by the way, to remember that in, in this context that, that formally only universities can award qualifications for the level six to eight or bachelor, master, PhD, because a formal qualification usually can only be awarded by somebody holy, holding a higher qualification and any institution awarding qualifications must be authorized on the national level. Another strategy of Encore relates to the membership conditions. Two years ago, we changed the statutes in the sense that full membership is open only to institutions offering five years or 300 ECTS in conservation restoration studies, leading to a master's degree. Associate members have to provide either a four years bachelor, 240 ECTS, or a two years master, 120. In addition, both categories have to, have to have a relation to the document on practice. This change allowed us to keep also those high-level institutions which do not yet provide 300 ECTS. And also the application procedure was changed in contrast to former versions of the statutes now Two persons appointed by the board pay a visit to the applying institution. A questionnaire for basic information is sent in advance to prepare the visit. 
This new formalism has proved to result in a much more transparent procedure. Furthermore, and this will be quite difficult, I think, in the next step, the existing members are going to be re-evaluated. That's a very sensitive procedure. For this process, a pilot phase is foreseen during which the board members will test the questionnaire and the procedure and adapt it for self-evaluation in their own schools. I come to the conclusion. The ultimate goal of Encore is the same as ECHOS, to further and enhance the preservation of the cultural heritage. And the strategy of Encore is to reach this aim through adequate education of future professionals, being, in, being endowed with all the necessary knowledge, skills, competences. As described in the eco-professional guidelines, they should be able to contribute to the perception, appreciation, and understanding of the cultural heritage. This means that the graduates have to understand the object in its full dimension, not only from the material point of view, but also including its artistic, historic, religious, and so on, relevance. And of course, they must be conscious of the relevance for society, for the present, as well as for future generations. A strategy to reach a coherent educational systems, system for conservatory stores is being prepared so that graduates are well prepared to act as high-level professionals delivering sustainable care for the cultural heritage of Europe, which ultimately is the point of reference for its roots and for self-identification of a society. Yes, and now I thank you for your attention. Thank you.